Welcome back. It's The Exponential Files. We are so happy that you're here. Um, the Exponential Files, I'm Larry Lawfer, your host, and with Jim Lowenstern, our co-host, we have a fantastic guest Lowenstern. today. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't know which part is taping and which part isn't. We're going we're gonna to do like hand puppets uh, for, we go. Uh, for Larry. <laughs> there you go. That would be helpful. That would be uh, helpful. Okay. Uh, okay. Ca Carrie Briner is a holistic coach, and she has been helping agents understand the difference between work and life. And uh, Carrie, if you could start off, you hit a point where you were unhappy, you were overworked, you weren't able to, to deal with your kids. What was that moment like? And, and what was the change? Yeah, so thanks for the introduction, Larry and Jim, thanks for having me today. Um, I am uh, a realtor of 24 years. I'm a wife, a mom, a friend, all the great things that everybody wants to be, you know, a daughter, a sister. And um, I was a business owner and an entrepreneur and I was exhausted and, um, you know, was subscribing to a myth that, um, that there was work-life balance. And that was, in my opinion, a myth that I subscribed to, which was very detrimental because I don't think it's a reality. I think it is a myth. And when you try to actually create something that isn't real, you're never going to succeed at it. And then it feels very, very defeating. And it actually was a vicious cycle because I believe that I should figure it out, but I never could. And so it really drained on me as a human being. And it really, really, quite frankly, um, made me feel very uh, insecure about how I could build a business and live a good life at the same time. So my confidence was quite depleted. I was frustrated. I was really burning out and I blamed real estate. And the reality was it had nothing to do with what I was doing. It was how I was being. And there was a big transformation there. And it really comes down to just not wanting to live my life that way anymore. I think everybody gets to a place where the pain is enough where they're willing to make a change because nobody likes change because change in and of itself creates pain. We've just got to get to a moment where we're in enough pain that we're okay taking on that next level of pain to make something better. And, you know, that was the moment 11 years in after being a top producing agent, representing a builder, doing it. I was raising children while I was trying to be a wife with a failing marriage, by the way, not taking care of myself and, and that was it. And that moment, I just said that this isn't going to be it anymore. If I have to quit real estate, I will. I'm just not living my life this way. And what I realized was I was able to find, um, you know, some coaching and um, take responsibility and realize that I could have a great business and I could have a great life. I just had to think about it differently. I had to make some different priority management choices. I needed to start leading my life in a certain way and have faith that my business would follow instead of being so reactive to my business. And that's really where it all began. And then, of course, you know, it's been a journey since. Well, I, I am really impressed. So what, what was the, someone, what, excuse me, Jim. I, I'm really impressed uh, that someone from the Midwest can talk as fast as you do. You made one phrase in there, the middle of it. I was I was doing, I wasn't being. Could you draw that out a little yes. bit? Yeah. So a lot of times we think it's what we're doing that burns us out or it's um, the job that we have. You know, you can look at different people in different industries. And I've met people doing certain jobs that I would think those jobs might not be very joyful. And yet they're happy. They are joyful. They have great energy. They are in a very, you know, great place. And it has nothing to do with actually what they're doing. It's like what part of them is doing it and how they're doing it, how they're being. And I think that what we don't, you know, we're called human beings for a reason. We're not called human doings, right? Um, and I had to remind myself of that. And there's two parts to that. In real estate or in entrepreneurship, I think that people get so attached to what they do. So what they do defines them. And for about 11 years, being a real estate professional, being a top producer defined me. It's what I was doing it, but it became who I was. And that's a very, very dangerous place because then you're going to make decisions based on that that are very personal because if the business fails, I fail. If the business is successful, I'm a huge success, right? Um, and so you're going to make, I know I did, and a lot of people do this, make decisions based on that emotion and that identity. So in other words, when I knew I wanted to go to my son's baseball game and that's what I should do, 
but then a client called me and needed me to go show them, you know, a $600,000 house at that time, that was a very high average sale price. Um, I made the decision based on this identity and attachment to my success instead of the, a conscious decision, which was the better choice is to reschedule that or find a different time and tell them I already have an appointment and go to my son's baseball game. And when we're tied to a result, tied to an outcome or tied to an identity, that is what we do. It's very, very dangerous. And that's the, the, the rabbit hole, so to speak, that I went down, which ultimately made me super unhappy. And so what ended up happening is I had to get back to who I was as a human being. And I had to find my own worth of there and not tie it to my real estate profession, but rather become the best version of myself and just have faith that my business would continue to grow, but look at it opposite. And that's not natural. Our brain doesn't do that naturally. So we have to make a conscious decision to think about it differently. So, so what steps did you take to make this change? Yeah. So the first step was I hired my own coach um, and it wasn't a traditional just real estate coach. I knew how to sell real estate. That was probably part of the problem. Um, I actually found somebody who is more, um, I found somebody who I wanted to be like somebody that had a phenomenal business way bigger than mine, but had a better life because I needed to figure out how did they do both of those things? How are they spending all this time with their family? How are they running a triathlon? How are they training for this? How are they doing all these things? I have not figured that out obviously yet. So I need to figure that out. And so it was a mindset coach. It was um, a transformational coach. It was someone that was going to make me step back and start pushing myself in the direction of what my priorities really were. So I did that. And then the second step that came to it was <clears throat> from that coaching, I needed to start giving myself time, attention, and I needed to start building up my own confidence and my own self care and love. And the reason why, and it sounds really fruity, the reason why is because that had been so beaten down because I felt like a failure, even though I was successful in business in general, I felt like a failure and I was frustrated with it. I needed to go back and find my worth and my confidence and my self-trust outside of real estate. And I had to start learning to um, know that I had other gifts and I was put on this earth as a human being for other things so that I could then better myself to then go repair those relationships and also be better for my business, which what you don't realize is when you are in that state, you're succeeding despite the fact that, you know, you're not at the best version of yourself. And if you be at that best version, your business would even be better. I mean, my business was great. And I think now like what it could have been, you know, if I was in a better state myself and, you know, the sky's the limit. So um, the first um, domino for me was my health and wellness. And I say that both from a physical perspective, as well as a um, mental perspective. And I think those two go hand in hand because physically, when you move the body, it does change the mind. And so for me, that was my first domino. I hired a personal trainer. I showed up every day, whether I wanted to or not. And I felt better. I had less stress. I was looking better. I had more confidence. I was showing up for myself. I created a better discipline. I had more energy, all of the things that needed to start the rest of the momentum. So there were two points there. Uh, one, you got a coach. Everyone out there is watching this. You can't do it yourself. Find yourself a coach. Find someone who that you like and trust, who is doing more than you, who has the life that you want. That's number one. And uh, yes. motion equals emotion. So if you get out and start breathing and exercise, that will help you in this industry. I, I get the gist. Yes, right? me too. And yes, yeah. you are right. Those We're... are the two points. <laughs> two points so for Gryffindor. What... <clears throat> so, so Carrie, uh, right now you're working with the XP. Yeah. Who were you working with prior? If you don't want to say their yeah. name, that's fine. But how many years have you been in the business? And yeah, how, how does EXP sort of fit into this new mindset that you have? Yeah. So that transformation really started about eight years ago. <clears throat> so I'm definitely, a, you know, a ways into this journey and it's still a journey, by the way, it's never perfect. And I'm still always getting better, but, and I go through ups and downs, like everybody, I like to say that because I don't want people to listen and just say, Oh, she got a coach and worked out. And then like her life changed. There was a lot more to it. And honestly, it's been much better, but it's like anything I get better. And then I kind of plateau and then I have to, you know, recharge and get better again um, because I'm a human being and, and I have to reset my own expectations and habits. So um, I was a top producing agent in Minnesota for 11 years. That's when I 
kind of had the, the, I guess the line drawn in the sand when I was at my lowest point. Um, I did end up getting a divorce. My children were fairly young still. Um, I stayed in real estate, but I got my coach. I started uh, taking care of myself. I made some very important personal decisions. Um, and I started repairing my relationships with everybody, including my, you know, uh, my ex-spouse, who we have a better relationship now than we probably ever did when we were married, as well as my children. And it was all because I started to be a better human being and I started to lead myself in a different way and understand myself. And I believe that that's everybody's responsibility. Um, and then secondly, um, uh, you know, I moved into a leadership position. So I grew the top real estate brokerage in the state of Minnesota and closed transactions for the next six years. Um, we were a Keller Williams franchise and we went um, to about 4,000 transactions or so a year. And that was a phenomenal opportunity for me to grow my leadership skills and to learn about business building and team building, which is what I immersed myself in. I helped to grow about 50 real estate teams over that time. Um, and then um, I had an opportunity to uh, move into the KW expansion space, and I helped uh, grow one of the largest expansion teams within EXP. I'm sorry, within KW, and um, and that's why I'm at EXP now. Um, and th that was a great opportunity for me to understand leadership at a different level because now I was doing it across state borders. So we started with three locations, we ended up with 25, and it took me to the next level. I think of leadership and team growth and business building. And all of that was a phenomenal opportunity to, for me. I couldn't be where I am today without all of that. Um, but what I realized is I started to get very uninspired with the team building model, because what I was realizing is that although we were providing a tremendous amount of value to the people we were in business with, it was a bit at their detriment from a split perspective, from a financial perspective, it wasn't truly success through others because you know, yeah, we were making money, but it was because we were taking it from them. And uh, now people had to work more to make the same amount of money. And I didn't feel in alignment with that anymore. So I left that position. I grew a national coaching company for the, for the next two years. Over the pandemic and the quarantine, we grew to about 500 clients served. We had about 25 coaches across the country from all different companies. And that's actually when I started to explore EXP because I met people in that coaching organization that were with this company. And I actually opened my eyes to it and realized this is a revolutionary team building and success through others model for people who have tried to do it in the traditional model and it didn't fit them. And so um, that's when I made the decision to... Uh, to just focus 100% on bringing all of my coaching, all of my leadership skills and my team building skills over to EXP. So that was a year ago, almost exactly. Um, and today we're in, I think about 27 states. We've got 150 agents and growing um, and we're having a blast. We're just really truly for the first time I'm succeeding through other people and it's not coming out of their pockets so that they can have a better life and so can I. And that's what I've been building up to I think this whole time. So now, I just get to coach my partners and the people in our organization to this holistic approach. And my goal is that we just figure out how to be happy to lead ourselves at the highest level and then really bring that into our business. And it's not about work-life balance. It's about choosing your priorities and having a good integration of both. And um, that looks different for everybody. There is no one size fits all. And that's what I like about EXP is that we have a lot of um, autonomy and a lot of ability to do it different ways here. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch every, every word and understand it. So if I had to guess what you just said, you're coaching and you're coaching your downline. You're getting paid from their success. Therefore, they're not paying you. The company is paying you. Yeah. You're making them successful and that makes you successful. Did I? You got it. Did I Let, fill let's, in the... Yeah, let's let's be a little more clear about that. Um, yes. The the yeah. uh, uh, the the money that you're achieving is coming from the uh, deals that are being done by the people that you brought in and and are coaching. Re revenue share. Yeah. And it's gonna, it's a uh, it's a revenue share. It's not a profit share. And because it's a revenue share and the way that EXP is set up, that is sufficient enough when you have enough people right. to to live a very good life. And you can. So, Carrie, well, well, uh, Larry is frozen. Um, it came down to. I'm, I'm sorry, Larry, I had to just fill in. You were frozen for a moment. Uh I, I had an agent the other day. She said, "I'm going to stay where I am. I, 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 I can't. I can't. I can't. I, I can't make a decision." But it was between Keller Williams and EXP. 
and they had already been with Keller Williams. Didn't make any sense to me. She called me yesterday. Well, she didn't call me. She texted me. She said, I made my mind up. My mind is made up. I'm going with Keller Williams. It's like, okay, so you went to Keller Williams. You went to another company. Now you're going back to Keller Williams. And you were presented not with just any EXP program. You were the, the creme de la creme, in my opinion. <laughs> um, and and uh, so what do you say to someone who, I mean, you, you obviously went to Keller Williams, you got to a certain yeah. point and you realized I'm, I'm happy, but I'm yeah. looking and I think I can be happier. And now you're yeah. with EXP. How did that, because I want them to see this podcast. I'm going to, I'm yeah. going to send them this podcast. And I was like, okay, yeah. you made your mind up. Why? Yeah, because, and so it is a good segue because on my search over the last eight years for transformation and becoming happier and having more internal peace and not being tied to my success as an entrepreneur to make me happy, made me a better person, made me a better mom, made me a better spouse. I did get remarried. I could never have the relationship I have today with a human being like I do had I not been able to figure this out about myself. And I believe that at EXP, because there are so many opportunities to truly um, build your wealth, not be tied to every real estate transaction for the rest of your life, um, to be able to um, fund your life in different ways, to be able to actually have joy succeeding alongside and through other people where it's not a detriment to anyone, to reduce your expenses and your risk and your micromanagement and your uh, long hours of traditional team building, there's so many things in this model, personally, in my opinion, that allow people to, to, to finally be able to have a better life with their business that just does not exist in the traditional model. And so um, I think that, the, that there's just a fear sometimes of people because they don't, they don't know enough about the ins and outs of EXP and about the way that they could create the life they want inside of it. And so they go back to what's comfortable. And that's probably what, you know, this person is doing and other people I've talked to. And so, but here's the reality. I was very, very comfortable, you know, selling homes and, and being in the life that I was after 11 years and making the money I was, I had to get super uncomfortable to have a better life. Um, otherwise, you know, it's like something's going to get uncomfortable, either doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same result, which is insanity that's going to get uncomfortable or just making a change and going out on faith and trying something new. That's uncomfortable too. So I always say to people, choose your uncomfortable, choose your hard life. Isn't easy. Um, but I'd rather move forward and try something new than stay in the same position because I did that for 11 years and it didn't serve me. Well, I think a lot of people, they're just focused on, um, numbers. Yeah. They go, okay. So this company does, this many transactions therefore i'll be better there than i'll be here yeah and and i think exp is not so much a business but a whole different way of doing it right. um i had an agent uh because that's what i do mostly is uh i'm, I'm looking for sponsorees let's call them in, in your case you're you're calling them um uh, partners coaching yeah my partners my business partners yeah Partners, okay, but the people you coach are they? Is yeah, the I word coach? them all, I trained them all. Yep. Yeah, so uh, they came up with the word, and and everyone has their own reason. Um, he, he says, well, when when there's too many gimmicks, I know there's uh, it, it's it's a problem. Uh, and he was with uh, Sotheby's and Compass and Caldwell Banker and probably somebody else that I'm forgetting. Um, oh, Keller Williams. And, and now he's back at Caldwell Banker. And when I brought up stock, it was, a, well, look what happened with Compass stock. When I talked about the rev share, that was a gimmick. And EXP has uh, so many good attributes. And I guess it's just as one of our guest said uh, a month or two ago, it's not for everyone, but um, in, in a way to live a better life, maybe, maybe it is. And, you know, yeah. maybe we just have to explain it better. Yeah. I, just, I mean, uh, I, so how I, do you explain yeah. it? 
Uh, I was yeah. with Keller Williams for six and a half years. I was in the ALC when I left Keller Williams to go with Jim in his uh, yeah. Castles Unlimited team. I saved myself twenty thousand dollars because the yep. the fee, it, it uh, seventy thirty split with a astronomical right. cap because of uh, where we are forty two thousand yeah. dollars cap. That's that's wow. a pretty big number. So yeah. automatically, and then when uh, Jim and I went uh, joined EXP as the Castles Unlimited team, um, that put more money in my pocket without doing anything more. And now yeah. I have a community of people like you, Carrie, that I can listen to, I can talk to, yeah. uh, we can share ideas here, and that's a huge difference. Uh, much less Kool Aid. Mm -hmm. Um, and, yeah. uh, it, it's an individual, you know, Hey, uh, would you like to come over? Would you like to, uh, grow your own business? Yeah. So yeah, about definitely. Go ahead. Carrie. No, I was just gonna yeah, say so Jim, asked, Jim asked the question. I think here's the thing. It isn't for everyone, but here's the reality is that you don't have to take advantage of any of those things. If you don't want to, you can right. just simply come over and save yourself some money and have some more individualism and not have to be a square peg in a round hole and build a team differently if you want to. If you want to take advantage of the stock, okay. If you want to take advantage of revenue share, awesome. You don't have to. Um, I think that the difference is, is that, you know, things that are unknown and new to people, they think they are too good to be true. If it was really true, you know, how is that possible? Well, I think that people just need to realize there's a thousand people moving over to EXP every single week across the globe. There's no other company that's grown at that pace ever in the history of it. So there's a reason a thousand people a week are joining. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to plug into all the things. You just have to figure out what's important to you. Is it a week or a month? I guess, I guess it. Hmm. No, no, it's a thousand. It, well, it's a thousand joining um, a month across the globe, not here in the United States, but across the globe at this point. That was the most wow. recent number. It yeah. might have slowed down a little bit, but we also have people leaving the industry because of the shift in the market. So, you know, that's not a net number. That's a gross number. There's still no one that's ever grown to that uh, capacity ever before. Um, but that, yeah, that was the most recent number that I saw probably back in um, September. So, um, I know in Massachusetts, in the last, well, it's not even a year, from December to yeah. today, we went from like 837 agents to over 1,200. Yeah. So that's almost a 50% increase in less than a year. Yeah. And most states, that growth, um, that's very common right now because now we're really seeing the compounding effect. It's the hockey stick. You know, it's slowly, 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 and then suddenly, because a lot of people have been thinking about it for some time, and now is the time where people make a change. So we'll probably see a lot of growth at the end part of the year and the first of the year. That's just kind of a, a cycle of um, of company growth within this industry, regardless of company name. So um, so I guess I would just, and then we can maybe move to, I think Larry had said time blocking, and I do have a couple tangible things I want to bring to that. But here's the reality is that you can either choose to stay at a traditional brokerage and chase every still real estate transaction for the rest of your life, and then maybe have an exit strategy and maybe not, and continue to give 20, 30, 40, $50,000 a year to somebody else and build their wealth. Or you can come to eXp and actually build your own and keep all of your own money. And most agents, even if they don't take uh, agent attraction seriously, if they tell a couple of friends, over the course of a few years, which happens if you do real estate, it's going to happen whether you want to or not. If you're a good real estate agent, you're going to have connections and relationships somewhere in the world. And they're going to say, hey, I've been thinking about eXp. I know you're there. How do you like it? That's how we grew Keller Williams, by the way, was through agents. And so they can't tell you any different because it's how they grow their company too. And so even if that's the case over the course of a three to five year period of time, if you bring a friend or two every year or so, um, you're going to end up bringing a couple thousand dollars of revenue share in a month over a few years time because of the compounding effect. And at that point, you're already making about $12,000 and you only paid $16,000 in your cap. And so even if you weren't an icon agent between that and the gifted stock, you're pretty much at a net zero. If you take advantage of the healthcare, you're probably saving yourself personally a few thousand dollars a year at least. I saved myself with a family of four, $9,600 a year. Wow. Having my health insurance here, that's a lot of money that pays for a, the majority of the cap that we pay as a, a family. So, you know, here's the reality is you don't have to do all of these different things and buy into all of these different things to realize that you keep more of your money here. But more importantly, if you want to wealth build, you can wealth build. The last thing I will say is most people don't realize 
everybody wants to call EXP a pyramid scheme. But if you're at a Remax, if you're at a Keller Williams, if you're at a Coldwell Banker, I don't care what brokerage, pick the name. You are in a pyramid scheme as well. Because let's just figure this out. You have the owner of the company who is a billionaire. Okay. The owner of Remax is a billionaire. The owner of Keller Williams is a billionaire. And I can go on and on. This is the person that is the billionaire. And then below them, you have other executives, maybe top executives. And then under them, you've got the regional people. And then under them, you've got the franchise owners. And then under them, you have the agents. Okay. The agents are very, 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 very far from the top of the pyramid. But if you did draw a shape around that, it is a triangle. Okay. It is a pyramid. All the work that you do as an agent is going to fund somebody else's life. And then in our industry, we can't figure out how to create an exit strategy. We pay too much for insurance. We chase every real estate transaction. We don't go to our kids' baseball games. We don't have a good quality of life. It's ridiculous. And I've been in the business for 24 years, lived it, and I've coached hundreds of agents to this problem. So instead of, of subscribing to that triangle and that pyramid, why don't you just change your mind a little bit and figure out a pyramid that works for you, which is that you get to be an agent owner. And so when we succeed as a company, we actually have wealth building that, by the way, is willable and transferable to our children. And so we can finally have an exit strategy, even if it's 10 years down the road. And that does not mean you don't still sell real estate. It doesn't mean that you change anything major in your business. And it doesn't mean that you become a full-time recruiter. That's just not true. And it's just what people are telling you. We have some of the most high producing teams joining EXP across the country. And all you have to do is search up life at EXP Realty. And there's a phenomenal blog and you can see all the people that are joining and they are top producers. They are top team leaders. They are top broker owners because they start to open their mind. And when they see this, they can't unsee it. I'm sorry. It's just difficult to unsee once you open your mind. That's why a lot of people don't want to see it. I'm just here to tell you, it, they don't want to see it because if they do, they realize I'm probably going to have to go there because if you make a decision to see what we have going on, and then as a business owner, you say no to it, you're saying no to a lot of things that could benefit your family. And you've got to live with that. And I'm being honest because it was a very big decision for me after being with a company for 12 years in leadership roles. It wasn't an easy decision to make a change to a new company. And I was very grateful to what I learned from the other company. But once I saw this, I had to make a choice. Am I choosing my future and my family's future or am I choosing a company? And that is a hard decision, but you know what? You know what the right one is. And now it's going to force somebody to make a decision that they're nervous about and uncomfortable with. And so some people just don't want to see it for that reason. So they don't have that pressure. Um, so now I'm going to go into time blocking because I know Larry said, I want some tangible stuff. So earlier on, I said to you guys, priority management, because what I, what the problem with my life was when I had no quality of life was that all my priorities were business or financial. So if all my priorities are in one area, then I'm going to have all of my activities be in that one area. And it was very unbalanced, right? So it's not about a work-life balance. It's a balance of your priorities and then making sure that those priorities are the things that you focus on. And then you have to figure out how to focus on those in some sort of integrated way in your schedule. So I basically had to redefine priorities. So the first one was my own personal health and wellness. And that included my coaching, both from a mindset and a transformational and business perspective, but also my personal trainer for my health. So that was my priority. I had to fit those in the schedule. And then my second priority was my key relationships, my kids and my family. I had to fit certain things in my schedule. They had to be time blocked because they were a priority and it was not an option. They were an appointment, just like anything else. And then I actually time blocked some spiritual and personal growth because I was very disconnected. And I think that was a big part of my challenge. Whatever that means to you, I do think all of us need to be connected to something larger than ourselves because otherwise it's a pretty lonely place. And then the fourth thing was my business and my financials. And I looped those together. And when I started to have priorities in four different areas, then I started to act differently because I needed to do things in all of those areas instead of just in the one area. And it, I became more well-rounded. I became more confident. I became more integrated. I felt better about myself figuring out how to do the things that were important to me. 
And so you just have to reprioritize and it's priority management. It's not time management. I mean, look, we all have the same time to spend. It's that some of us have clear priorities that we fit in and some of us don't have any priorities. So we let anything come into our schedule. We just react to everything and we do whatever that comes in. That doesn't lead us to any sort of active decisions or choices. And that's how I was living very reactively for, for 11 years. So now I decided to live more proactively and put those things in my calendar. The last thing I would tell you to do though, is you're going to still say, how do I fit in my trainer and my coach and my lead gen and team and my kids and my spouse and my, all these things. I just don't have enough time in the day. The question, that's what people will say next. Yes, you do. You're thinking about it all incorrectly. You don't have to do all those things every day, by the way. You just need to make sure that you do them every week and that you can integrate them so that you don't let any of those things go by the wayside for too long. And you don't have to spend as much time in each of those areas as you think. The problem with us as human beings is we go into something and we're very distracted. We are not present, we're not purposeful, we're not intentional, and we waste a lot of time. So it shouldn't take you three hours to do your lead follow-up and your lead gen. If you were actually purposeful focused, you'd have a list of your 10 names or 20 names, you'd fire it out, you'd be totally undistracted, You'd have great present conversations. You'd move the needle forward and then you'd move to your next thing. And so you don't have to spend an hour at the gym. If you were actually in and out purposeful, you can get a very good workout in 30 minutes. And if you, if you want to spend time with your kids, go sit on their bed for 20 minutes uninterrupted with no cell phone, no distracted and talk to them and be totally present and you will move the relationship forward. The problem is we think we need hours for everything and we need to do hours every day for everything. And that is just not true. We just have to identify those key areas and we need to do something consistently that's going to feed those relationships or that part of our life in a positive way. And then we can get it all in. And that's how we grow our habits and make sure our priorities show up in our calendars. And so I think sometimes we just think about things wrong and I was for a long time. And then it's a very self-sabotaging behavior because we're trying to achieve something that is not a reality and we need to actually get back to reality and we have to understand what's possible. And then we've got to commit to those things. And then, you know what, you can build on it and spend more time in areas. Once you get your initial habits and priorities down, it takes time, you know, um, if you haven't studied how the mind works or how habits are formed, it's small little activities over time. You don't make massive changes and expect to maintain them. It doesn't work. Um, and so um, I, I find that as realtors, we're all overachievers and we think that we're supposed to go big or go home. And it's a very self-sabotaging behavior because it's not sustainable. So I would say erase everything on your calendar that you don't do. Put things in there that are important to you. Make it very small at first so that it's doable and reasonable and then build on it because that's how you're actually going to make sure that you do these things on a consistent basis. And consistency will always be better than intensity. Always, always. Carrie, are you in production now or just the coaching? I don't do production anymore. My husband still does. Um, so he and his team do a few hundred transactions a year here in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. So they're a big team of about 25 agents. It is a hybrid of a traditional team and a self-organized team. So when we moved over to EXP, he was able to give the agents better splits because of revenue share and also because of different savings that all of us were able to take advantage of. The agents were able to take advantage of savings in healthcare and their splits and their caps and all those great things coming from Keller Williams. So he was able to redefine what the team looked like which has helped it grow. I now spend 100% of my time just pouring into our partners from a coaching and training perspective. And then we've obviously got our partners locally here, but I have partners in 27 states. So, um, you know, we've partnered with broker owners, team leaders, individual agents, other coaches, kind of just people that are in alignment with what we do. And um, and then we work together. And, and how do you talk? Uh, so the health healthcare, we really, the health insurance, we never really covered that on this uh, show before yeah. and we'll just take a minute. Uh, okay. How do you discuss this with potential recruits and your uh, team members? Yeah. So here's the thing about um, healthcare is that 
you know, as independent contractors, if we don't have any other source of, of um, maybe a spouse isn't working anywhere else, or we're the solopreneur and uh, income earner, we have to go find health insurance. So we're just going and buying it off the free market, which is extremely expensive and has gone up and up and up and up. And so, I mean, literally for the last 12 years, I've paid a second mortgage payment to have insurance for my family. Um, and if you just think about that alone, I could have an investment property that I was funding or two or three, you know, for that um, building wealth. Instead, I was just spending money on something that I knew I needed to have and half the time didn't use. And so, um, so when we came over to EXP, we knew that it was a value, not only for us, but for our, not only the people we would recruit, but for my husband's team members. And, um, you know, examples of this are, an, uh, you know, an older couple who didn't have any insurance because it was too expensive when we moved over, um, you know, now have a, an insurance policy that only costs like $600 a month. And the, the lowest quote they were given on the free market, so to speak, was like $1,300 a month. It was just astronomical. They just couldn't afford it. Um, you know, we were at $1,700 a month as a family of four still on insurance. And today we pay $7.99. I mean, it's just an astro same deductible, same insurance, everything. So what happens with EXP is basically they've partnered with a third-party company that um, allow that has provided um, the agents with essentially what it would be like for you to have access as an employee somewhere. It's like a corporate benefit, but it's for agents. And so it's just at a, it's at the, the same rates as if you were part of a corporation. So you get the discounts, but it's a phenomenal company. It's a great network of, of, um, of doctors. There's no detriment. It's just basically allowing you to have the ability to get this insurance at a, redu at a reduced cost. At, today, when everything is more expensive, if you can reduce that, I think it's a win in and of itself. Basically, you can do a free quote call with Clearwater Health, and they will tell you uh, what your specific situation could look like. And um, you can make that decision then while deciding if you want to join EXP. I send that link out to people and say, look, you don't even have to join EXP. Just do the free quote call and use that as part of your due diligence. And so inside of our workplace, there is um, an, uh, an, a Clearwater Health Benefits Workplace Group. You can get all that information there. Margo is her name. She's a great facilitator of that. And she's in workplace all the time. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's a place to start because they give you a lot of tools that you can share with people. But I think that that is a really important one because we're finding about one in three realtors um, that join EXP. If you ask them why they did, healthcare was one of the top reasons. And uh, Keller Williams didn't have health insurance? They didn't while I was there. I've heard they've implemented- They're working so on it now. They're working yeah. on it now. I just I want to make one correction. Right. You you said yeah. you went to the same agency. You didn't. You got the ask. same. You got the same coverage. You um, you you you, you froze. Did. Oh, maybe I froze. Somewhere. So um, no, he Carrie, did. Um, <laughs> and you know, I'm the one here producing it. I'm seeing that everything <laughs> is going through. So oh. uh, let's let's all be happy and <laughs> chill out here. Then. It's been an absolutely wonderful uh, to have you with us, Carrie. I think that we have more words in this show than we've ever had in the 30 minute period. It's been awesome. Thank you for everything you're that great. you've done. So, Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, you're welcome. So if anybody's watching that is with EXP, please join the EXP Family Tree Workplace Group. It's open to everybody in EXP. We now have 7,500 people. We'd love you to join us. We do tons of training. So Family Tree? Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, I'm part of it. Awesome. Thank you, Carrie. Yeah, Thanks. thank you so much uh, to everyone. Thanks. The Exponential Files, we'll see you next week. See you then.